I've always been a little weird. I've always been a little off. I am doing stuff like reading manuals from 1970, you know, on this particular space capsule, or reading about like this particular like geologic rock formation. Diving down into rabbit holes, like finding like cool stuff and then showing people it. And, and either the reaction is, God, that's really cool, or that's completely random, and I don't know why you're telling me this. My dad said, you know, I don't care what you do. Just do something. Just be productive. Do it. This is camouflage that I made, and it is me tracing about a quarter of the surface of Mars. They put the, the surface of Mars together like a, like a jigsaw puzzle. And a lot of times the photographs overlapped. But you, know, you color it right and suddenly it looks like camouflage. When you look at a lot of the other fashion designers out there, you know, they're always like, you know, my collection was inspired by X or you know, I was really trying to harness Y. And I was like, why don't we just go literal? Let's use clothing as a storytelling device. All of my clothes tell a story. All of my clothes tell something that is true, that is fact-based, that is documented. And, you know, meanwhile, you know, we live in a world that's kind of crazy right now. You know, I almost kind of want my product to be these little nuggets of truth within that miasma of chaos, going down these rabbit holes, you know, exploring stories that just aren't on the surface. And we're kind of like bringing it out to the light of day. It's digging. Rabbits dig. And that's the whole idea for Edwin is that, you know, he's a better ambassador for the brand than I am. He can also just grab and hold attention long enough for somebody to experience the brand. And I think that that's, that's a really powerful thing. That's something that I cannot do myself. This is the National Bureau of Product Research logo. And what this is, is basically the, the flame of knowledge. Before I did fashion, you know, I was in media. I was a NASA contractor for 13 years, you know, in terms of like telling their story. We interviewed thousands and thousands of scientists and on occasion somebody would have like a data visualization or a graphic or some pictures from their work where I would be like, this is so awesome, can I, can I keep this? I started to collect stuff and that's actually where I got the name the National Bureau. In that sense, you know, the National Bureau really is kind of an evolution of this path that I've been on. I was really faithful to a really high resolution photograph of Mars. I just sat there, it took me 80 hours, and I just traced everything. Ryan's attention to detail in his images, it, it's apparent. It actually says here, right here, 7,349 images that covered 85% of the total surface of Mars. I don't want to call it OCD, but um, follow me and I'll show you where we do the work at. When we print his tests, you know, we'll do test after test until we get it right, and I'll do test after test that he may not see because I don't think it's right. You know, I'm, I'm on the same plane as he is as far as the level of detail and what has to be produced. What we do here is do uh, dye sublimation. Um, so we print over there, and here's where, uh, once the ink is on the paper, that we adhere it to the fabric. Um, this heats up to 400 degrees and applies about 70 pounds of pressure. Uh, for an extended period of time, and that uh, causes the ink to turn into a gas. That gas permeates the threads. When you release the heat and pressure, it locks it in. And so you, you'll never get bleed, you won't get peeling, cracking, fading. It's a dye versus an ink on top of the fabric. The process enables a certain like market separation inherently. As long as I can get the story out, as long as people understand what's being done. I've got a brighter version of this now, and I've got some interest. So I'm like, just say yes. 
just wear it to the Grammys. I would like to see my garments be kind of a gateway to a more knowledge-based life for people. Truth is really important in this world. I think that history is important in this world. And I think we're losing some of that right now. The reason why telling stories about science and technology and discovery and the progress of humankind is important is because it's the basis of a great society. You know, we've got some big problems as a, as a planet. And so it's about sort of understanding what's going on. It's about understanding, okay, what do we really know as a, as a species about where we're living? And you know, what do we really know about the problems that we have? And what do we really know about the solutions? And it's all based on, on research and the scientific method. It's sort of like trying to bridge the gap between the greatest tools that we have as a species and where culture and society is right now. You know, in this world, especially when you look at, at content, there's all types of like misdirection and distraction. I want to be something that's different than that, and I want it to be something that sits on top of that.